Parkinson's disease is named after James Parkinson, a 19th century apothecary surgeon who first described the now classic features of the disease in his 1817 paper, An Essay on the Shaking Palsy. In this paper, Parkinson's described six individuals, three of his own patients, and three he simply observed outside his office window on the streets of London with symptoms of involuntary tremulous motion with lessened muscular power, a propensity to bend the trunk forwards and to pass from a walking to a running pace, the senses and intellect being uninjured. He called their affliction paralysis agitans or shaking palsy. The French physician and father of modern neurology Jean-Martin Charcot attached Parkinson's name to the disease decades later. Of note, this image, generally associated with Dr. Parkinson, is quite suspect. Obviously an early photograph, our good doctor died in 1824 while a practical commercial photographic technique wasn't developed until the late 1830s. This image is likely of a dentist of the same name who practiced in London sometime after the invention of photography. We now know that Parkinson's disease and related syndromes are caused by a malfunction of an area of the brain called the nigrostriatal pathway, a dopamine-dependent control center for movement. There are other non-dopaminergic causes of tremor, such as essential tremors that will not respond to the usual treatment regimens of Parkinson's. Currently, the only definitive way to diagnose Parkinson's disease is a post-mortem histologic evaluation of the brain. In addition, some of the early signs associated with Parkinson's disease, such as constipation, loss of smell, trouble sleeping, and apathy, can be very subtle and either ignored or misdiagnosed for other disease processes. Therefore, a non-invasive anti-mortem diagnostic test to establish the diagnosis is key to the appropriate clinical and pharmacologic management of these patients. In a simple electric circuit, such as this electromagnet, the flow of current and activation of the magnet is controlled by a simple throw switch. To turn the magnet off, we simply open the switch and break the circuit. Our brains are composed of billions of individual cells called neurons. These consist of a central cell body that contains all the structures of metabolism and function. The fine tendrils emanating from the cell body are called the dendrites and can carry information either to or away from the cell body itself. The dominant extension off the cell body is called the axon. The axon is covered by a series of sausage-like tubules called the myelin sheath, an insulating structure composed predominantly of fat, cholesterol, and protein that facilitates the rapid transmission of electrical signals either down the axon in motor neurons or up the axon in a sensory neuron. Communication between these billions of cells is facilitated through the synapse, a small gap between the axon of one neuron and, in this particular case, the dendrites of the next. The area before the gap is called presynaptic and just after the gap is, of course, postsynaptic. The presynaptic cleft contains innumerable vesicles of chemicals called neurotransmitters. When an electrical pulse travels down the axon, it causes these little vesicles to degranulate and spill their chemical content into the synapse. The chemicals traverse the gap and bind to receptors on the postsynaptic cleft. If enough chemical is present, a threshold potential will be reached and cause the next cell to fire, thus propagating the signal on down the line. Here is a brief list of the various chemicals that function as neurotransmitters in our bodies. Medications and diseases can affect these agents producing desirable or deleterious effects. For instance, acetylcholine is the agent that causes the muscles to contract when stimulated by the nervous system. Botulinum toxin blocks the presynaptic release of acetylcholine and can cause life-threatening paralysis. However, in very dilute concentrations, 
Botox can be injected into the skin of the face to relax small muscles that cause wrinkles around the eyes and mouth. Serotonin is a transmitter that controls our mood. SSRIs, or selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors, are used as antidepressants to block the reuptake of serotonin from the synapse and treat debilitating depression. In Parkinson's, the problematic neurotransmitter is dopamine. Dopamine is a neuroendocrine transmitter produced in the area of the brain called the substantia nigra, located in the cerebral peduncles that connect the cortex to the brain stem. Dopamine mediates the reward system of the brain and, of course, is involved in fine motor control, the dominant deficit and feature of Parkinson's disease. With regards to the reward system, the euphoric feeling one gets when receiving a nice compliment or enjoying a fine meal with your significant other is produced by the release of dopamine in the forebrain. Cocaine, a triple reuptake inhibitor or TRI, suppresses the presynaptic reuptake of serotonin, norepinephrine, and dopamine causing these neurotransmitters to accumulate in the synapse and produce the characteristic features of this drug including mood enhancement, jitteriness, and the addictive euphoria or rush associated with the abrupt accumulation of dopamine in the forebrain region. Dopamine is also used in a different area of the brain called the striatum to control our fine muscle movements. The striatum consists of two distinct structures called the caudate head and the putamen. As you can see, when outlined, these structures produce a characteristic comma-shaped area. This appearance bears remembering as the striatum is the area imaged in nuclear medicine when evaluating a patient for Parkinson's disease. Returning to the synapse, as stated above, after the neurotransmitter attaches to the postsynaptic cleft, the cell fires. If this chemical transmitter is not removed, the cell will continue to fire. As such, the various chemical signals are either broken down and eliminated from the body or, as in the case of dopamine, are brought back up into the presynaptic axon to be used again. This process is facilitated through small channels on the presynaptic cleft called dopamine transporters and is also the origin of the name DAT scan which represents a concatenation of the DA from dopamine and the T from transporter. The agent used in DAT scanning is called ioflupane, which has a base unit bound to the radioisotope I-123. Ioflupane crosses the blood-brain barrier and attaches to the presynaptic dopamine transport apparatus in the striatum. Once bound, the I-123 isotope emits gamma rays. These rays can be picked up by a SPECT or single photon emission computerized tomography camera. The camera determines the location and concentration of the activity and displays the information in 3D and cross-sectional formats. This is the 3D reconstruction of a normal DAT scan showing the concentration of dopaminergic cells in the striatum. When the same information is displayed in reconstructed axial slices through the brain, we can see the symmetric, comma-shaped distribution of dopaminergic cells in the striatum, similar to the anatomic images we saw earlier. As you can see, the images are hazy and of low resolution. Remember, this is more of a physiologic exam to determine the concentration and distribution of dopaminergic cells in the brain. With a specialized SPECT CT camera, which has both SPECT and standardized computerized tomography units built into the same system, the SPECT data can be superimposed on the highly detailed CT image to give both physiologic and anatomic information as seen here. This patient, on the other hand, shows an isotope pattern resembling a period with absence of the comma tail. 
This is consistent with a loss of dopaminergic cells in the striatum and would indicate that the patient's symptoms are related to Parkinson's disease. Finally, this patient shows markedly reduced activity in the striatum consistent with extensive loss of dopaminergic cells confirming the patient's tremor is in fact related to Parkinson's. Currently, in the United States, DAT scanning is approved for the differentiation of Parkinson's and non-Parkinson's tremors or movement disorders. In Europe, the same technology is also used to differentiate dopaminergic-related dementias, such as dementia with Lewy body and Parkinson's disease dementia, from Alzheimer's. In my opinion, this may actually be a more useful and cost-effective application of this technology due to the consequences and clinical ramifications of a misdiagnosis. First, let's differentiate between the dopamine-related dementias, Parkinson's disease dementia, and dementia with Lewy bodies. While both entities, like Parkinson's, are associated with loss of the dopaminergic cells in the brain, the onset of dementia relative to the movement disorders defines the disease process. In Parkinson's disease dementia, the characteristic movement disorders are diagnosed first and dementia symptoms appear a year or more later. On the other hand, in dementia with Lewy bodies, the dementia and movement disorders are diagnosed simultaneously or movement disorders are noted within one year after the onset of a dementia diagnosis. Of the two, Dementia with Lewy bodies is more of a diagnostic dilemma because, in the absence of the characteristic movement disorders, the dementia is often misdiagnosed for Alzheimer's with potentially significant iatrogenic consequences as will be discussed momentarily. Some of the clinical and histologic features of dementia with Lewy bodies are as follows. Symptoms overlap with both Alzheimer's and Parkinson's, shows loss of dopaminergic neurons in the striatum, visual hallucinations, the patient is often aware that they are seeing things that really don't exist and can occasionally find these vivid and detailed mirages entertaining. However, as the disease progresses, these hallucinations can contribute to one of the key features of the disease, paranoia and delusions where they are convinced that people are stealing from them or their faithful spouse of decades is cheating on them. Finally, apathy, where the patients become essentially anhedonic finding little or no pleasure in the daily activities of life. Again, this feature is likely due to the lack of dopaminergic activity in the reward centers of the forebrain. When the families of the afflicted patients report this delusional behavior to their doctor, oftentimes it's assumed that the patient has an Alzheimer's type dementia with psychosis prompting a trial of antipsychotic medications. Antipsychotics function by blocking the postsynaptic dopamine receptors in the brain. As such, in a patient with a dopaminergic mediated dementia such as dementia with Lewy bodies, this particular class of medication can result in severe side effects including worsening of the Parkinson's associated movement disorders, sudden onset of severe sedation inducing a catatonic like state and possibly fever and confusion. Likewise, the standard treatment for the movement disorders of Parkinson's levodopa can, understandably, exacerbate the visual hallucinations and paranoia of the dopaminergic-related dementias. In summary, DAT scanning is a nuclear medicine technique that can be used to evaluate the loss of dopaminergic cells in the striatum of the brain and distinguish Parkinson's from non-Parkinson's movement disorders and tremors. Hopefully, in the near future, the same technique can be used here in the United States to differentiate the dopaminergic and non-dopaminergic dementias and possibly reduce or avoid the untoward consequences and costs of an iatrogenic or pharmacologic exacerbation of the patient's condition associated with a misdiagnosis.